Hi folks, you've seen the title. Yes, it's yet another cheap lens review. And yes, it's another per gear. And this time is this tiny guy here, the new 35mm 1.6 MC. Let's find out if it's a gem or a flop. Welcome to Red35. My name is Jimmy Chang, a professional photographer and filmmaker. This channel is about sharing my 15 years of pro experience with an aim to help you become better in photography or video making, or both, together with gear review to help you get your shots and videos easier. I also focus on Olympus Micro Four Third because I'm an Olympus ambassador too. So smash that subscribe button and put on the notification to keep updated on my upcoming videos. If you've been with me for the past 12 months, you may have seen my reviews on some of the Pergear lenses already. Started with the 25mm 1.8 that shot me, in a good way, with Saoli. It was a great menu lens for your Micro Four Thirds camera. Then I reviewed the 7.5mm Fish Eye, which may not be the sharpest lens around, but certainly a great entry level Fish Eye lens that sells for about the same price as one of those smartphone lenses. And since some of you said that I always review uh, the more expensive pro lenses and not affordable to many, here I am, looking at per gear lens that costs less than a pack of premium underwear. <laughs> and I mean it. And this 35mm 1.6 lens retails at... Are you ready? $70. Yes, $70. And that's the recommended retail price from per gear's website. You can get even lower prices on Evo Bay for about a dozen of McDonald's Happy Meals. Unlike my recent reviews on the Metacon 17mm.95, the packaging is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> Even a joke. But I'm not bloody complaining. In fact, I kind of dig it. Pergear doesn't want to hide the fact that this is a cheap lens after all. With a simple carpet box with no marking on what's inside, and a fluorescent padded lens pouch to protect the product. Well, at least they give you a pouch. <laughs> so, from the outside, this 35mm 1.6 looks almost identical to the 25mm 1.8. In terms of build quality, you can expect the same metal and glass construction. And yes, this thing here is made with proper material. Well, apart from the lens caps. I know there's a difference material costs, but surely a metal lens can't be this cheap or others are just ripping us off. The lens does not use internal focusing design, so it means that it will extend when you focus. The focusing ring is nice and smooth, and the aperture ring is clickless, which is good for video, but never ever good for photographers. Yeah, for me at least. But not a big deal, but you will have to physically check the aperture every single time to make sure that you have the correct setting. And since there is no electronic contact between the lens and the camera, your EVF will not show what aperture you got. A way to tell this is a cheap product is that the lens markings are printed on rather than engraved, so you can rub it off with heavy use. Apart from that, the build quality is good. It may not be as good or feel as solid as the high-end pro lenses, but it will certainly impress people who only experience plastic lenses so far. At 193 grams, with a dimension of 38 millimeters in length and 55 millimeters in diameter, this little paperweight here is perfect fit for Micro Four Thirds camera, especially with the likes of pen or smaller OMD bodies, such as the EM10 here or the EM5 series. But what that also means is that you can use this lens on gimbals. If you use focus motor, you can practically have a pretty solid companion for mobile filmmaking. So far, I have mixed results from Pergear's 25mm and 7.5mm lenses. One is exceptional for the price, and one is a total reflection of the price. So what about the 35 1.6? Well, once again, I'm very 
impressed with Pergia's optical design. With six elements in four groups, this is a very simple lens. It's good to be simple because you get better light transmission without using any exotic elements. Another way to save costs. Here are a few test shots of my favorite model Jenny from Russia. You can see that at wide open 1.6, this lens already gives me really sharp results. And this performance improves slightly and get optimal details by f4. But the good thing is that sharpness doesn't deteriorate until f16 when diffraction kicks in. The 12 bladed aperture also helps to maintain the round bokeh shape too. With that many blades, you're sure to get some pretty starburst highlights in night photography too. But, yes, there is a but. You see, despite the lens is multi-coated, which usually means that it produces higher contrast images and reduced flare and ghosting, the latter is pretty bad. See, for me, as I shoot a lot of photos against the sun for those romance between my clients, this lens will need to be very careful if I want to attempt similar shots. The lens flares like bonfire and popcorns. No matter how much you stop down, it's the same. It's the lens coating, perhaps, and nothing you can do about it, even with a hood. So, what's my take on this? Yet another ultra cheap per gear 35mm 1.6 on the Micro Four Thirds platform? Great, it's great. Tiny, pocketable, and lightweight is what most Micro Four Thirds photographers and filmmakers want. The essence of going small, right? But again, it's not just that, it's the optical performance part that really left me pleasantly surprised. It's sharp from wide open at 1.6 all the way to f8. And being a 35mm lens, it's a great medium tele lens for portraits, such as head and half length shots. You saw the pictures as well, the bokeh is damn amazing. All that if you can get past the flare. It's more a marmite affair, you either love it or hate it. But for those who utilize flares like me, you may want to experiment and something that I haven't been able to do during lockdown. For the price, this per gear 35 1.6 is arguably one of the cheapest and best medium tele lenses I've tested so far. I'm also testing its bigger brother, the 51.8 as well. And when that video is up, you'll see the link up at the corner. There's a little reminder, you can win this very lens at our See the World Creative Competition 2020. I'll put the details in the description, so good luck. So that's it folks, hope you enjoyed this video and let me know what you think about this lens after you see the photos and you know what to do now. Thumb if you like the video and sub if you want to support this channel and me. Peace! Yeah, done.